So on this one they give us the length of FG is 16, the length of FD is 20, the length of TU is X, and the length of TR is 8. So we're going to set up our problem with the dashed lines. Those are the dashed lines, and I'm going to make them equal that corresponding side. So F, oh, that should be a D, over TR. Okay, so these, this is my corresponding dash lines. Okay, see how they're bisecting the segment? So it's a median. And um, then I'm going to set this up with these corresponding sides. That's how I set up my problem. So now I just got to plug in the numbers. So that's going to be 16 over X equals 20 over 8. Then you just do your cross multiplication like we always do. 16 uh, times 8 is going to give me 128. 20 times X is 20X. And then you go through and you divide both sides by 20. So you're going to get 6.4 equals x, and I'm gonna, and then we're going to find uh, x. And okay, you, you don't just say, "Hey, Miss Porridge, right there." Don't say that because that's my joke. It says find x for each pair of similar triangles. Well, look at this one. This one really is an altitude. Now remember, the altitude, altitude, is. Um, altitude, I make sure I spell it right. Altitude vertex to perpendicular with base. And that's what it's doing right here. Uh, that's how I know it, it's the altitude because it's perpendicular to the base. Now remember, when you have a median, you're going from the vertex to midpoint of the base. Okay, and the reason I know that this one is uh, doing the midpoint is because they're showing me that those segments right there are congruent. Alright, so let's solve this problem. <laughs> okay, remember I told you you're always going to set your altitudes and this right here determines who's in the numerator and who's in the denominator. So triangle LMN is in the numerator and triangle QRS is in the denominator. So you're going to set it up like this, LMN over triangle QRS. Whoever they mention first in a similarity statement is who is going to go in the numerator, just to help you out there. So I'm going to put my altitudes, MO over RT, and then my side that I'm going to use, I'm just going to use this one because that's the one they gave me the measurements for and that's where X is. Oh, silly girl, ML, she probably should be LM, but we'll be okay, and then RQ. All right. So now I'm going to plug in the numbers. So MO is 15, RT is 9, and then ML is 30, and RQ is my X. So I'm going to do my cross multiply. So I'm going to have 15X, 9 times 3 is 27, you just stick a zero on it. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 15 so I can find X. So there's X. I found him again. So 270 divided by 15 is going to give me 18. So this X equals 18. If you look right here, um, 30 divided by 15 equals 2. So 15 times 2 equals 30. If you go down here, and you look 9 
times 2 equals 18. So I know I did my proportion correctly. All right, there's the official answer. All right, find x for each pair of similar triangles again. All right, look here, LM numerator, QRS denominator. So when I set up my proportion, LMN is going to be in the numerator, QRS is going to be in the denominator. So here's my altitudes. Oh, this one's way down here. It's so small they had to do an arrow. So remember your altitudes come first. So MO over RT. I got my correct numerator and denominator. And then the side I'm going to use is the side they've got X on. It's the only one I know measures for. Which LM over QR. So now I'm going to plug in my numbers. MO is 16. Uh, RT is 4. And LM is 18. And QR is X. So do my cross multiplying. 18 times 4. Ooh wee, that's a big number. 72. I'm going to divide both sides by 16 so I can get x all by itself. That's the only way I can find him. 72 divided by 16 is going to give me 4.5. Oh, forgot my point. There we go. So that's my big answer right there. There's my official answer. All right, then you've got word problems. Oh my goodness, word problems. I don't know how to say this guy's name. But anyway, he's standing near a flagpole that is casting a 40 foot long shadow. Now, whenever I'm um, doing word problems, I like to underline important information. And then this guy, he's five feet, 10 inches tall, and his shadow is 30 inches long. Then it wants me, and you probably, you can use different colors to help you out, but I'm boxing the question in, or the statement, it says estimate the height of the flagpole to the nearest foot. So let's draw and there's our flag, okay, and there's our flagpole. And then here's our shadow of our flagpole. That's the shadow. All right, and they told us, we want to find out how tall the flagpole is. They told us that the shadow of the flagpole is 40 feet. 40 feet, okay? Now then, you've got Jen, I'm just gonna call him Jen. You got Jen standing here He's a real skinny guy with a long neck. And there we go, he's smiling. He is five feet, 10 inches tall. Well, then I have to think about 10. How does that work in? Oh, let's just, let's switch everybody to uh, inches because that'll make it easier to work with. So if he's five feet, I do, f to convert it to inches, I say five times 12 equals 60. That sounds good. No, yes. Now I'm gonna have to do it. I stop and second guess myself because I'm five feet, I'm five feet four. I did five times 60 instead of five times 12. Well, that's 60. Okay, so that's 60 and then plus 10 inches. So that's how many inches tall he is. 70 inches. If, and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna convert 
this 40 feet I'm gonna do everything in inches so let me get my pen back so I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna say okay 40 times 12 and the reason we're converting everything to inches is because Jen's shadow is 30 inches long let's um I'm going to put Jen's shadow. Uh, let's put pole shadow right there. And then 40 times 12 is going to give me 480 inches. So the pole is 480 inches long. Okay. Now then, we're doing triangles, right? I told you anytime you're doing indirect measurement, you're going to do it like you're working with triangles. So here's our triangle. Well, I'm going to have to make it a little longer right there to make it work. That's our triangle. But now you have your proportion that you can set up, okay? So I'm going to take... Um, Jen's height, 70 inches, over the height of the flagpole, which is X inches, and I'm going to make it equal uh, the length of Jen's shadow over uh, the length of the flagpole shadow, which is 480 inches. So now you just do your cross multiplying and 70 times 480 is going to give me a huge number, but that's all right. How about 33,600? And then that's going to equal 30x, divide both sides by 30, and you're going to have the f uh, X is going to be 1,120 inches. So your answer, it says estimate the height of the flagpole to the nearest foot. So I'm going to have to take these inches and I'm going to have to convert it to feet. Now the way you do that is you take 1,120 inches divided by, oops, 12 inches and that'll tell you how many feet it is. So 1120 divided by 12 gives me 93.3 repeating. So 93.3 repeating and it said to estimate the flagpole to the nearest foot. So the nearest foot means no decimals. So flagpole 93 feet tall. That's my answer right there. And it helps always to do these drawings and just remember how to do conversion. You've got your geometry uh, formula chart and on one side of it that I sent you and on one side of it it shows you how to do conversions. There's the official answer. They, d they didn't do a drawing in the key. Here's our summary. Uh, we learned about indirect measurement. We learned the uh, proportional altitudes theorem. And we learned the proportional medians theorem. And you need to go through and read the lesson. And read through the reference guide as well. Work on these problems in the problem set. Make sure you understand these. If you get them wrong, you need to go check on the solutions. Because if you got that wrong, you want to make sure you understand why so you won't make the same mistake on a quiz or a test. Uh, and if you don't understand the concept when you get finished with that, then you contact me and attend TOGA if you have any questions before you complete the quiz. And that's going to be it on our lesson of indirect measurement. Thanks for listening.